Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to 1922 Project. My name is Kelly and um, I am going to do a really quick video on my cover stitch machine today. I know I've been um, doing videos about the t-shirt quilt and I have one more of those that'll come out tomorrow, but I posted in a Facebook group about doing binding on my cover stitch machine and people were asking how I have it set up. So I thought I would just do a really quick video on that. It is cold in Texas. You can probably hear my heater. Um, maybe I'll turn it off when I'm actually looking at the cover stitch machine, but this was a fun little project for a day. My kids aren't even in school today. Uh, and if you saw outside, you'd be mortified um, because it's beautiful <laughs> out. But I think there was ice on the roads this morning. So anyway, um, quick video on this. We will get back to our regularly scheduled programming tomorrow. Okay, so this is the machine I have. It's the Brother 2340. I just got it off of Amazon and I did, you know, I watched it until it was at one of its lower prices and then got it. It's pretty like, it's a basic model, but it's been working great. So I have a few videos about it, not a ton. Um, just because not everybody has access to a cover stitch machine. But this video won't be much about the machine. It's really just about the attachment. This is a, um, I got this off of Amazon. And again, that will be linked down below as well. And it makes, I don't think you can see the etching here, um, but it makes a binding that is one and a half inches. I'm sorry, a half an inch. Um, so different bindings will do different thing or different binding attachments will do different things um this one is it folds over on the top but not the bottom so the bottom stays flat so this would be like the inside of a garment and it's just one layer and that's all you need because it gets um it gets cover stitched there. But then on the other side, it's been folded over and you get this nice clean edge at the top. So this is, I did this after like finagling this thing for less than 30 minutes. Like I think this was only my third attempt. Like this was my second attempt. So it's really easy to set up once you wrap your brain around it. Um, Brother does sell one of these. It is around $100. Um, I got this one for $15. So as you can see, it does not attach properly. You have to tape it on. So I left it set up just so I could show you guys what it looks like overall. Um, but I'm going to take it off and we're going to set it up again. That's going to kind of be the true test of... Um, whether or not I'm good at this. So, um, or whether or not it's worth it. You know, it's kind of one of those things where it's like, yeah, it stinks to, to tape it down every time you want to do binding. But if you had the kind that screwed in, you'd have to unscrew it every time. You, I mean, I don't know. Uh, and you have to finagle it either way to get it lined up properly. So let me show you real quick what it does. Um, and then we will take it apart and set it up again. So I've got it started um, and I'm just going to do a couple there. Hang on. My, my foot pedal is in hidden behind the camera. Okay. So maybe I can do this without, uh, this won't be the best angle. I'll move you guys in just a second um, when I'm setting it up. But basically, you just start going and you feed this in and it binds it all at one time. So, obviously, if I were doing this on a garment, I would pay better attention. But even with just like, you know, doing a video and throwing it in there, it looks fantastic. So, let me get you at a better angle. I'm going to take all of this off and I will show you the nitty gritty of it. Okay, we're up close and personal and I took it off, which makes me very nervous, but um, we are going to see if this is as easy as I think it is. Um, so here's, you can see better where it's engraved here. 
Um, so it's a one, it's a half inch. I keep wanting to say one and a half. It's a half inch binding that it makes. And this number, the bigger number, is the number you're going to cut your strips. So this is one and three eighths. Um, I will say I, I'm happy with my purchase. Very happy. Um, I do wish I, the binding was slightly smaller because I intend to make um, children's clothing. But when I compare it to a store bought, it's really not that different. But anyway, where I ordered this from, the half inch was the smallest one. So I wouldn't go super tiny, like I wouldn't go like a quarter inch or anything, but um, this one seems to be good. So uh, if it were the brother kind, I assume it would somehow attach into here and you could slide it and move it around. Um, I do think that on Amazon, you can also get these on eBay. I also think on eBay or uh, Amazon, they have like a, an attachment where you can attach something here and then this sits on it. But the blue tape works great. No biggie. I have tons of blue tape around here. So I'm just going to keep doing that. Um, I have seen videos where I wasn't quite sure where this goes. So for me... It worked out best if it's lined up almost perfectly with my foot, um, where this edge is lined up perfectly here. Um, so before we tape anything down, let's get something started in here. So here's my strip. When you cut your strips, you're going to want them to be much longer than what you need because you're going to definitely waste some in the beginning. Um, well, and at the end too, I would assume. So basically you feed this through and you'll want to get something. Um, I have a handy dandy, if I can find it. I've got, I bought years and years ago, I bought these at Harbor Freight. Um, and I think I bought them to weed vinyl, but they weren't great for this. So just something pointy, a pin, um, some little scissors, something, but you get in these little grooves and you feed it through like that and then it kind of wraps around this doohickey um to keep it straight um and then the same thing in here and i don't worry too much about i just kind of cram it in there um I, don't you love how i'm talking like i'm just a pro um i just figured out this out this morning but keep shoving it in there just cram it in there then you've got this end that you pull out. Now, right now it's a hot mess, but I just kind of pull it out as much as I, I, until I'm getting a good curve here, and then you can just back it up. So we're gonna back it up. And then you take your pointy object, and, and actually, let me do it like, it doesn't need to be on the machine right now. Let me do it to where you guys can see it. So I just kind of poke it through, and then you'll see as it goes, it starts making that binding. Um, now there are two little screws up here and I did move this one just a smidge because, let me show you. So when you start pulling it out, you can turn it over and you can see what's going on here. So when I it was first set up, this was overlapping just a little too much. So I adjusted that and it kind of, if you, whoa, hello, sorry guys, hang on. I have the world's worst tripod. Okay, sorry about that. I think I might have a little bit better lighting now anyway. Um, we don't need to be up here just yet. So anyway, I when you, when you turn it over, you can see what kind of binding it's gonna make. And when I first got the machine, or first got the attachment, it was kind of too far over. So you can loosen this screw and move this part. And then the same with the bottom. Um, like you can loosen that and move it. I didn't move this one. I just moved this one and I just moved it a smidge. And again, you can just play around with it and see. Um, you know, turn it over, see what it's doing back here. I would imagine that all of these come different. So 
you know, your yours might be totally ready to go. Yours might be way off, but that gives me a good, you know, gives me some space here so that when it cover stitches, it covers that raw edge. So I fiddled with that just a little bit. We can back it up again and I'll show you again how you do that. So again, just take something pointy, poke it through and just pull it out further than you need. And then you'll see the binding. So what I did is I went ahead and I got a piece of tape ready and put it on the actual attachment. Okay, so let me, let me get you guys up above. Okay, my first attempt earlier today, the problem that I had was that as it was feeding through, it was going off to the side. And I think it was because I had the whole attachment too far over this way. For me, and again, it could be different with your machine. You're just gonna have to play around a little bit. But for me, it kind of needs to be lined up directly in front of the foot. So we're going to put it under the needles and you'll have to, again, this is why you need binding that's longer than what you need. So what I found is it needs to be consistently um, to where both, to where the whole binding is under the foot. I think the first time I did it, this edge of the binding was too far that way. And again, it just made it veer off. So I put it under there. You can go ahead and, I guess, you know, stabilize your binding that way. Back it up a little. And then I just made sure that, that like I think if it's tilted, if your whole binding is coming this way, it, you're gonna have some trouble. So I just made sure it's kind of right in front and then you want to make sure that um, the attachment itself isn't like on top of your feed dogs or anything. So we're going to lay it like that. Get some more blue tape. Although, I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be immovable. I mean, you want it pretty sturdy, but... If it's not perfect, it'll be fine. So we'll tape this down and we'll see. And this may not be perfect. Again, this is something that I started working on a couple hours ago. So uh, I feel like something is stretching a little bit, but let's just try it. I'm standing, so it's going to be tricky to... to push my pedal here. Okay, hang on. Well, what in the world? Um, my pedal's not working. That's not awesome. Hang on. Oh my goodness. All right, hang on. We shall return. Oh, oh hey, looky there, it wasn't on. Oh my goodness, you guys. I've got this, I've got a light shining on it, so I thought it was on. So you see, I'm not even touching it and it's not looking too bad. So let's put, let's put that in there and see how we do. So I'm not, you know, you're just gently guiding. I would say that I wanna come over just a hair more. I'm not as happy with this one as I was our previous one. So I think it needs to go that way, just a smidge. So let's check it out. Yeah, yeah, so see how it's getting, it's a little too close to the edge there for my liking. So I'm a little embarrassed, I have to say, to show how I release tension because 
I don't know, some people are really, really good at this. And I just kind of wing it. Oops, got caught there. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and pull all that out. I'm going to cut my threads. So not terrible if I were sitting and really paying attention, that might be okay. But let's go ahead just for kicks and let's scoot it over just a hair more and see if that doesn't give us a little bit better results. So, gonna do the same thing as last time. Gonna feed it through. Um, let me grab another strip here. Okay, so, put that in there. Hang on. Okay, so I'm looking at this again and I'm thinking last time I also decreased the distance between this and the foot. So we're gonna try that too. Um, I feel like, I don't know, seems like it, it makes it more, a, more of a controlled situation, um, but I could just be making that up, I don't know. All right, so let's do it a little bit closer. Yes, actually I remember, because I remember thinking that it did line up with this, there's just no way to lock it down. So we'll move it up just a hair, and we've lined it up. Yes, now I remember, that's exactly how I had it last time. It's almost like it becomes an extension of the foot. So like this and this are lined up and it's not very far. I think maybe that's the difference. So let's try it again. Again, you gotta pull out more than you need. Well, if I can get to it. Tweezers are kind of handy to have around for this as well. Um, but so it's now completely under the foot. Get a couple going here. I would also think that when you first start it, this whole section is going to be kind of ugly. So you don't want to feed your garment in until. So let's see if we have a random piece. I wasn't prepared with a um, pretend garment here. Hang on. Okay, I grabbed something. All right, so let's see how we do. Yeah, now we're in business. Okay, so that's my tip. Yeah, that looks fantastic. Look at that. And then there's the back. So happy, and I'm so glad I filmed this because it'll be a good reminder for me too. So, let me see if I can zoom in just a little bit here. Oh, and I'm gonna turn the light off because it's a little hard to see with that light on. So I lined up this edge with the edge of my clear foot, and then I bumped it to where it's almost, it's pretty much lined up with this big groove. So truly, if you had, I keep thinking like if I had a 3D printer or something, I could print something that would hold this in place. Like even like, couldn't you picture something like horseshoe shaped here that you could just pop that in? But whatever, I'm, I'm happy with the blue tape. It just takes a second. So there you go. And here, now that we have better lighting, is our fantastic results. There you go, guys. I hope that helped. Um, if you have any questions, put them down below. Happy to answer them. Again, it is a uh, cold and rainy day, and I kind of have nothing better to do today. So anyway, have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye.